Good evening everybody, I'm Pixie from Planet Pixie and I'm joined this evening by Sharon from Velvet Rose Ceremonies. Um, if you are watching along, please do comment, feel free to ask any questions if you're watching on the replay, hashtag, hashtag even replay. Uh, good evening Sharon. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Oh, excellent, thanks. So, um, just before we launch into who you are and what you do, um, your as for anybody who saw the post earlier today your business partner of indigo hearts emma may be joining us later uh, she's caught up at the moment um so if another face does appear on screen uh, don't be alarmed so sharon uh, tell us about what you do okay so as you've said i um i'm a celebrant and i run velvet rose ceremonies so um if people don't know what a celebrant does um, would you like me to go over that? Yes, please do. Okay. Um, so a celebrant is basically somebody who um, delivers and, well, writes and delivers um, weddings, um, funerals, baby namings, all of those things that you have, sort of key life events, really, um, rites of passage, all of those kind of things. Um, so, yeah, we write everything from scratch and it's all bespoke so it's very heartfelt in what we do so what's the difference between what you do and what a registrar does okay so a registrar would be the person who would legally marry a couple um and when you legally marry somebody you have to say a certain phrase or certain certain words to be legally married now a celebrant um, will give you many more options because we're not restricted by those laws. So um, the, the ceremonies that we do, we are looking to create something of a love story, really. So we go and meet our clients and we would chat to them. We'd ask them certain questions. We'd leave them with questionnaires. We'd find out what makes them tick. Um, how they met, you know, any interest they have, things that really annoy them about one another, you know, all of those lovely juicy things. And we can create a ceremony that's completely bespoke to that couple. So we're not looking at going and seeing the same ceremony like you would with a registrar over and over again. So it's something that is completely individual to that couple. Or as I called it earlier, the boring bit. Yeah, the boring bit. We've all been there. We've seen a million and one ceremonies, haven't we? Where they, you know, you think, oh my goodness, you know, not this again. Well, with a celebrant, that doesn't happen because you can do whatever you want when you want to do it. And there's no restrictions. So if you want to get married outside, um, a lot of venues that have um, licenses to marry people will have a registrar there. There are certain things you can and can't do at those venues. Um, if you're going to have a registrar so you have to get married under a a um a permanent structure yeah a permanent structure has three sides and a roof which is crazy i mean does it really matter why three sides oh <laughs> i'm sure they made this show <laughs> whatever um but you know with a celebrant you can get married overlooking a lake you can get married on a cliff top you can get married in a blooming graveyard if that's your thing you know so it's all entirely down to you as a couple and what you want to do. There are no rules at all, really. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, hopefully the uh, the law that we were discussing earlier passes and allows celebrants to, to do yes, that legal well. bit and, and yeah. takes away that boring and legal. Yeah, element. yeah. well, we're um, hoping, that, hoping that's going to happen soon and we can legally marry couples, which would be fantastic. Yes, that would be. Um, so, obviously, you do other types of um ceremonies and, and not just weddings but weddings are the ones with the most um symbolic rituals aren't they they are yeah there can be others um but weddings we do quite a lot of symbolic rituals so it all depends on what the couple wants really um so we can do things like hand fasting um which is um many years ago it comes from a pagan law and couples were tied together for a year and a day um and then once that's if they then decided after that year and a day if whether they wanted to stay together 
and then they could break you know break that tie if they wanted to and that's where it comes from so we can get members of the um the bridal party or the guests anyone really that the couple want to to be involved in those rituals and it's quite nice sometimes to have the little bridesmaids and and you know some ring bearers and things tying the the hand fasting cords around as you say the the symbolic rituals which is nice um we do things such as ring warmings um so people go in and they they give that ring a little wish and as you come to the ring exchange at the front the rings are nice and warm with everybody's love and best wishes and then they the couple do the ring exchange there's lots of different things sand ceremonies unity candles um and i do one um I've not done one yet, but it's something that I want to do. And I've got a couple that have chosen to do it for a wedding um, towards the end of this year, which is a crystal intention setting ceremony. Oh, which, yeah, it's that. It's amazing. So I get um, the idea is I get members of the bridal party um, to have a, a lots of different kinds of crystals. So I'll only take ones with me that will represent things like good energy um wealth health love all of those kind of positive kind of things they will then throughout the ceremony sit and set intentions with those crystals in their hands um and once they've done that there will be a ceremony at the end where those intentions and those crystals are passed over to the couple and they will then be put into um some kind of a container I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet whether it be a box or a a, a nice bag or something and the couple will then be able to take them away with them with all those intentions set in those crystals so hopefully that will stand them in good stead to start off their their married life that sounds lovely nice stick of selenite in there too to keep them charged yes absolutely. I do do, um I do actually plan to at some point um I'm going to look to collaborate with um somebody who um does crystals to put together different packs for people so um like a perhaps it depends what the the uh, the okay life occasion is obviously um but like birthing packs or yeah you know packs to keep people calm when they're prep uh you know planning or yeah, like you say the, the the crystals for the ceremonies and things like that so it's something i want to um looking to do myself actually doing yeah, different it's, tailored it's, it's, I do so yeah it's, packs, I guess yeah it's nice it's nice that sounds like a lovely idea um so what's your favorite which is your favorite um ritual I've got to say hand fasting I like hand fasting yeah definitely lots of love yeah, yeah. and I like that other people can can get involved and, and get involved. be part of it definitely yeah and properly physically get involved with it you know as, as you're setting those those rituals and you know we're all talking and and people can be literally winding those cords around and it's 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 really very symbolic it's lovely yeah. are there any other types of ceremonies that tend to have symbolic rituals or is it more they can be you can, you can do symbolic rituals at any ceremony um there are things like um, tree plantings for funerals. Um, you can use hand fastings for funerals as well. Um, I haven't because people don't really know a lot about really about symbolic rituals. So it's not something that's discussed. Um, I suppose you could use crystals at funerals as well. You know, How would you use the hand fasting? Because I know we said we were sort of talking earlier, obviously, before we came on and we were saying that obviously f- funerals are pretty structured and very much the same but how what how would a hand fasting be it, you could still use it in terms of unity so you could unify the family even more coming through such a really dark and, and difficult time and just that unity of we're going to support each other we're going to be there for one another it's going to be difficult but we're going to get through it together, kind of, you know, if that's the kind of thing like that you want that. to do. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's cool yeah and it's, 
few, like I say, funerals, like I say, they're very, very structured usually. Um, but that's something that I'm hoping to change. So, you know, I want to be able to go out and say to clients, you know, you, you don't have to stick to um, what is expected. You know, if, if you're, if the person that they've lost, their loved one that they've lost, was into theatre or was into a really good sing song or a karaoke or something like that why not do that you know why not have a sing song at the funeral because you know they would most likely sit at a, a morbid funeral thinking to themselves this isn't what i want at all i'd rather be you know down the pub having a karaoke and a beer thanks so yeah. to me, you know you've got to represent that person and i don't think there's enough of that in funerals um yeah because you were saying you don't have to have a funeral director you don't actually have to employ a funeral director no not legally um as long as you can get the deceased person from where they are being held and there are places that will do that um for direct cremation um straight to the crematorium or to the burial ground then that that's fine you can make all your own arrangements you can order your own coffins i ordered my mum's coffin when my mum passed away we went with a funeral director but i didn't like their coffins and i said no i don't want to do that and they were like oh i've got a minute i said no i've seen some, some pretty no. jazzy ones to be fair <laughs> you can still put her in it you know <laughs> but i don't like yours i want my own thanks um so yeah, um, you know, the pe families can have a lot more choice than they think they can have. And I think it's about making people aware of that. And I think most people, what they do is they go to a funeral director that they've gone to their whole life. Everybody in their family who passes away goes to the same funeral director. You tend to find you get repeat custom. Um, so they will go and they trust the funeral director and they will just say, do whatever, you know, this is what we want. We want these flowers, we want this coffin. And that's all fine, but then it also needs to be explained to families that you can do other things too. You know, if that's yeah. what they want, great, it's no problem. But they can do other things as well. And I don't think there's enough of that conversation that happens. Yeah, definitely. Well, like I say, I didn't even know that you didn't have to have a funeral director. So. Mm interesting isn't it <laughs> it is it is because you just kind of you just go with the flow don't you and yeah, at the time know. that yeah, people don't know yeah. what they should and when, do when yeah. you need one you're not in the mind frame for no for looking yeah. into it are you you just yeah. it just needs to, yeah. to be and, done yeah and that's why when i go to see a family i can be with that family sometimes three hours because I go to them and I ask things like, did they have any pets? What was their favourite holiday? What did you enjoy doing most? You know, all the things that I want to find out how that person was in life and what made them tick and what kind of personality they had. Did they laugh at the most stupid, sarcastic things? <laughs> you know, did, do they, did, they, did they swear all the time? You know, because those these are the things that make the person who they are, not where they were born, where they grew up, and all of that. It's how yeah. they act day to day, and um, I think I think the families benefit from having a celebrant that way. Yeah, and I think I think the opportunity to have those conversations and feel that the person you're talking to actually knows and cares about. Who they're talking about as opposed yeah. to you know having I mean obviously I've been to family funerals and essentially there's a stranger stood in front of me telling me about facts and figures about somebody that I love more than most people in the world or you know it, than, than anybody else like yeah it does feel very in, in person and a bit false but if you can find out the the inner workings of that person, what went on in their head as much as possible, yeah. then 
it's going to, you know, it's it's more heartfelt. It means so much more. Yeah, and it sounds like for the people there experiencing it, it would be a better... Because, I mean, like at my nan's funeral, I felt like it was very... Um, like we had to be a certain way and we had to as the the morning family we had to walk in perfectly and we had to sit down seamlessly and like uh, so I sat um I I, I, I had to move anyway I, I'd sat somewhere but I wanted to sit next to my partner and there wasn't space from where I'd sat so anyway I moved and I suddenly felt like I'd just made a like a big fumble and a ruckus in a very yeah structured place and I just thought like oh god they're looking at the one with the rainbow air and you know she's causing a ruckus and you know what a dish you know you know <laughs> disappointment yeah. to, the, to the ceremony whereas I think if it had that more relaxed feel then I maybe wouldn't have felt so conscious and so self-conscious mm. about it yeah yeah I, mean, I couldn't even get people's names right that day so how they expect oh. to right, exactly Exactly. I mean, I'm just reading the other day because I'm very, very pro um, sort of funeral revolution and, you know, changing the, the way that funerals work and the face of funerals in the future. And I was reading it. Um, what was I reading it? I think it was a blog of some sort I was reading. And it was it was titled, um, I think it was 10 things that you shouldn't do at a funeral. And there was another one that was like funeral etiquette. And I'm thinking... Oh my lord! Wow. A funeral is be you, and you know, remember that person with a very open and loving heart. That's what you should do a funeral. There's no. But how bad is it? But how bad is it that enough people feel like they need to know the etiquette and the way they should behave and grieve that somebody felt the need to write that in the first place? Write a blog about it. Yeah. It's that's crazy. It's wrong, but. You know, it's the, the funeral industry has been there for you know since the year dot, and well, sadly yeah. it hasn't been. <laughs> but no. it's my mission, and I'm taking it on. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> yes, do it. <laughs> so what's the what is the process in in working with you if we go with weddings or just because it's chirpier? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to the happy things. Um, so. What normally happens is um, the couple will find me one way or another, either by social media, website, or a directory. Celebrant's directory is a, a good one that I'm on. Um, and they usually email me first time, first off and say, oh, I'm interested in speaking to you. So I would always ring them back rather than email if I can um, because I think it just, it just a bit more professional. Um so what we do is you just have a quick chat about dates and availability and what they want and just a general overview of everything. Arrange to meet up um, or do a Zoom these days and have a conversation, a little bit more detailed conversation about um, the things that each, each um, person in the couple wants. So whether it be they want an outside festival wedding or they've booked a venue and it's a big manor house or whatever it is, you know, and then I can then go away, put my thinking cap on and think of some ideas, think of um, ways that we can incorporate certain things like hand fastings and, and what have you, if that's the kind of thing that they want. And I would always, I tend to keep in touch with um, clients at least once a month because remember with weddings I tend to you can have people booked up in, and in your diary for two years I mean I, I've just taken a wedding for the end of 22 so you know it's you know you, you've got to just be on your toes really and make sure you, you yeah. contact everybody. I'd also get them to fill in a questionnaire um which talks about how they met um things that they like places they've been together any experiences they've had um all of those kind of things that really it's their love story really um so as you can try and and put that into the wedding ceremony in a, in an appropriate way um and then we would 
we were just constantly, we would always email, we'd email all the time, and there'd be a couple of more visits just to, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's, all of that. I go away and I write a script, and all the scripts are written from scratch. Um, don't use templates at all, because otherwise they're not bespoke, and that's not what we're about. Um, that is then sent to the couple, and they uh, read through it, and that ceremony, that script can be tweaked as much as possible. You know, if they want certain wording put in, that certain wording goes in. If they want a dog as the ring bearer, then we get a dog as the ring bearer. You know, An owl. <laughs> oh yeah, owl. Yeah, owl. <laughs> yeah, we've got a venue that does that. I work with a venue, it's a, a wildlife sanctuary, and it's it has an owl that flies the wings in. It's amazing. Um. So yeah, that pretty much we can do anything, and I tell them that, and I tell them to think outside the box. Don't think traditional wedding. If that's what they want, they want the you know the white dress and the all of that. I can do that too, but I tend to my tagline is for the unconventional because for me that makes that for me that is. I've always been alternative, always have been, always will be. And I'm here for that. More fun, more, much more fun. If you can have a I good can one. be more personal. As soon as you've been yeah, those traditions and those expectations, it's a, it genuinely can be about the two of you. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. That's why you would have a celebrant because, as I, like I said earlier, with a registrar, there's certain words that you say, certain things you, you can and can't do, but with a registrar, with a, a celebrant, sorry, there's none of that, no restrictions, and you literally can do whatever you want. Who and it, want it do doesn't it? have to just be about two people then either, can it? Because no. You know, no, 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 no. Fair, you know the, the world isn't what it used to be. You know, there's no. people who already have children who might want to get it involved. There's not just couples now, there's throuples now. You know, the world is changing, and, and yeah. you know, these things need to change with it. Absolutely, absolutely. I've, I've got friends who are in a... Um, polyamorous relationship and there's you know they there's three of them and that's all fine you know I mean people might frown upon it but I certainly don't and it's it's yeah. and why the shouldn't the they get that same why shouldn't they get that same experience with exactly. I mean I, I, I know I, I semi know um a throuple and two of them are married and they together have a boyfriend but why if they wanted that kind of ceremony and that joining why why shouldn't they have that that day and that experience which no, there's no reason why they shouldn't it's just um it's the social norm isn't it yes and people think definitely. they have to conform and they have to do this and they have to do that because aunt mary wouldn't like it if we didn't well as far as i'm no, concerned why aunt mary then aunt mary. <laughs> exactly. so you're in the corner with a bottle of brandy she'll be really she'll be fine <laughs> No, I exactly. I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. It's, we we need to break a lot more of those uh, those norms. Um. So, what should people consider when what when working with you? Is it mainly the the story they want to tell? You know, the the symbolic rituals. What what's the main things that they should consider? Would you? Say? I suppose it depends on on the the ceremony. Um, let's let's talk about weddings. So, with like I've said it before, you can do whatever you want, and that is fine. But don't ever ask me to jump out of an aeroplane. So, <laughs> you know, it, I watched a "Don't Tell the Bride" earlier, where that was the thing. <laughs> exactly. Now, for me. I mean, my couples, the majority of my couples are more alternative. They want something a bit different and a bit quirky and all of that. And that's great. They're my, what we would call, ideal client. Um, I think the main things to think about are what you want to say, how you want your wedding day to be, um, know that although it's going to be an amazing day and it will be an amazing day because it will be completely heartfelt and it will be all about the couple 
celebrants can't legally marry you. And that, unfortunately, is sometimes a bit of a deal breaker for people. Yeah. Hopefully it'll change. But that should be okay soon. <laughs> yes. I think that's. I think the the main thing is to you've got to gel with your celebrant. You know, if I'd got a couple that were, you know, really really high end, and you know, we're going to spend thirty forty grand on a wedding, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I would not do it because I know in my heart of hearts I wouldn't be the right person for them, and they they'd be. They'd be disappointed because they've not got the right person for them. Not because I'm, you know, I couldn't do it, but because I wouldn't be that 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 person. I wouldn't be the right person. It's about, for them. It's about the vibe, isn't it? And the the more obviously it depends how you spend your money, but typically the more you spend, the more you're going for the the bigger lavish day. Whereas if you're wanting to to work with people who are doing more smaller more intimate things typically it's not going to cost as much as that massive you know manor house and it's like we said earlier before we came on you know yeah you can walk into a venue and it can be stunning and it can look just like the last stunning building and all of a sudden you're uncomfortable yeah you've got to have that connection with right, yeah. when yeah. you and the celebrant obviously your your partner would also be helpful to have a connection with but you know yeah. you, those suppliers are, you know it's important to, to have that understanding isn't it and and Very. know where the other person's coming from yeah 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 because I mean, I mean I'm quite a, a laughy jokey kind of person and I can you know, sometimes say things and people think oh, that was a bit strange. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> that's my life. Okay, that's what I mean. You know, if you're not gonna, if you if you don't gel with me, then there's no point. Yeah, my uh, my so obviously I we were saying earlier again I have a a, a muggle job as I call it, and uh, my my director there said to me one day, "You say something weird every day, and that has to be the weirdest thing you've ever fucking said." To be fair, I just said I don't like bacon. But <laughs> it's still <laughs> stands. <laughs> I'm with you. But it's like I, I don't know if who caught the uh, the live last week. And we were saying, you know, alternative suppliers for alternative people, not yeah. just suppliers that are happy to provide an alternative service because then you get it, and it's not just oh, oh, aren't they a bit quirky. You mm. know, and you see, and you understand the, you know, the the importance of whatever little quirk they've picked absolutely you know, yeah if they've got a little wand on each napkin it's not because they're just weird and quirky it's probably because they're obsessed with harry Potter because it's wicked yeah you know, yeah it's and knowing and understanding and not just allowing that's right and that's quite important um before um so w- before i move on to the question that i'm going to ask you um where do you cover as a celebrant? Um, it depends on the ceremony, in all honesty. Um, weddings, I will cover nationally. That's absolutely fine. Uh, because I put, I'm there for the whole day and it's 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 okay, I can stay over, that kind of thing. Um, funerals, I tend to cover um, within about an hour, an hour and a half of so content. Um, either way doesn't matter where um and the same really for things like namings and and rites of passage that kind of thing um we all just we also do things like um we do some of the um the druid festivals as well um i say we myself and emma we've just done the winter solstice um in some woodland area in Shropshire I wasn't I don't even know entirely where I was when I was doing it <laughs> I was driven there I could never have got home I was driven there and we did some lovely um we did a, a lovely winter solstice ceremony there so that was really nice um and blessing ways um again similar things sort of within an hour of of uh still content really so what can I, I know it's quite hush hush tight lipped at the moment, <laughs> what can I get out of you about your new venture? Okay, 
So myself and Emma um, and every other wedding supplier on the planet right now um, have had brides and grooms and couples and, and what have you very disappointed, postponed, cancelled. And to be honest, we're a bit fed up of it. So what we wanted to do was create, hopefully, I'm hoping it's going to work out, should, um, a COVID resistance um, micro wedding um, weekend, really. Although the weddings will actually only take place on the Saturday. Um, so short of a full lockdown, we're hoping that we can get couples married and have a wonderful celebrant wed ceremony this summer. And it's going to be the one venue that we've got um, confirmed at the moment is in Ashbourne. And it's a lovely glamping site. Um, and it will be a complete package, all-inclusive complete package. So we're hoping that is going to take place. Um, we're just crossing our fingers and toes and everything else we can at the moment. So it's all not all finalised yet. So, you know. But we're, we're hoping that's going to happen this summer. Can I get anything out of you as to how it would work and what a couple could expect on the day? Or is that till, still top secret? Um, um, okay, so I can go into some details. A little bit. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Um, basically, a couple, a couple will get everything that you would get at a normal wedding. So all the suppliers. Um. So we've been in touch with suppliers that um, we've worked with before on things like um, photo shoots and stuff like that. We've explained to them about um, what we're doing. Um, so there'll be things like a photographer and, you know, um, a stylist and um, florist, those kind of things. Um, I think that's I think stressful I, to try and do yourself, <laughs> which exactly. is why people like oh, I am around. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so we are, so we're linking up with all the suppliers that we know and we love, and we know do a fantastic job, um, and we're keeping the price as low as we possibly can for people, um, so they can they can actually have their day because people have been waiting a long time now. How many um, guests do you anticipate people will be able to have? Because obviously normally when you're booking, there, there's, there seems to be quite a gap in in numbers um, that people cater for. But also you tend to have to allow for your suppliers. So how many, obviously this takes away that element of the stress as well. Yeah. So how many how many guests do you think each couple could anticipate? Each couple, at the moment we are saying there will be a couple and four guests that is to um, be catered for um, in terms of, you know, food and, and what have you. Um, and then possibly if we can, we will open it up a bit further to additional guests, but without the catering. So, you know, to yeah. look at the ceremony, watch the ceremony and, you know, still see the main part and the, the most important part of the day, um, really. Um so, yeah, yeah, I think it's a little bit still sort of in the air with that one, but that's what we're hoping to do. Yeah, and I think obviously as rules change as well, probably yeah. give you the scope to to open it up and, and do that bit more for people that do want smaller weddings, but bigger than... Still have things. all the bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that was the kind of thing that we wanted to do is is have that intimate ceremony but still be able to have all the suppliers and all the things that they want you know why, why there's definitely a gap in the market oh, definitely yeah. that gap in the market for people that yeah. want you know a, a, a different size to not everybody wants to go to Gretna to elope yeah. some people you know want to stay closer to home and it's not because obviously you say elopement and people think you're just going to run away and get married with strangers but it, it's not necessarily easy so people just want a smaller more intimate experience yeah, yeah. and we're going to be doing the hand fastings there as well so that's you know that's another element to it 
but people will have to still see a registrar for the legal element won't that's right they will yeah yeah but that's something that can be done you don't have to have the ceremony at the register office um you can just have your two witnesses um and the couple and just book to register the the marriage so so it's like 20 words <laughs> yeah, paper. Yeah, 50 quid 50 70 pound and it's um it's just to over the desk process it takes about 10 minutes that's it like the, the birth. Cool. So where can people find you? Where can people follow you? Where can people find out a bit more about you? How can people get in touch with you? Okay. I think I have put your Facebook page in the description, I think. Okay. So yeah, Facebook, um, Instagram. I'm on there as well. I'm on everywhere. Um I'm on LinkedIn for more for my funeral side on LinkedIn um, under my 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 real name Sharon Rollison um, and I'm also on a directory called the Celebrant Directory. Um, so on all of these platforms, other than obviously LinkedIn, are you down as Velvet Rose Ceremonies? I am. Yeah. Um, like I say, with the 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 business I run with Emma is called Indigo Hearts um, and we're under Indigo Hearts Ceremonies on the various platforms on both uh, Facebook and Instagram. And this is where people can find out more about the package we were just yeah, discussing. Yeah, we just started up a new um, Facebook group, 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 group. No, what happened there? Well, whatever you like, we're breaking all the balls today. <laughs> And um, that's called Avant Garde Brides. And that basically is a place for brides to be. Um, it doesn't have to be brides, it can be grooms, it can be whoever really. Um, Catering for everybody. Be, it, yeah, everybody. Um, to be able to come together as a community, those people who want to, we call it reimagining weddings because we're fed up of everything just being the same. <laughs> So we want people to think outside the box, be a bit more radical, be innovative, um, and work with us and tell us what they want and, you know, see what we can do and we can move forward together as a community. That sounds good. Mm. Right, so I will just pop you backstage, as they say, and okay. I'll be with you momentarily. All right, then. Take care. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, please do join me next week. I won't try to fully pronounce the name of my guest next week because I don't know how. However, I will be speaking to Mike, who is a bespoke jeweller, uh, which I can guarantee you do not want to miss because he makes some very interesting uh, pieces. Uh, so do join me at the same time next week whilst I speak to him. Um, like I say, if you have any questions, please do drop a comment. Um, Feel free to pop over to Instagram. Uh, you can follow Sharon over there, uh, follow myself, follow uh, this page. Um, it is a Planet Pixie on Instagram also. Um, so like I say, any questions, please do get in touch.